Good morning, Miss. Hope you are having a great day. My name is Chen Fung Yu, and I will be the one to start this presentation. The person that we have chosen for this assignment is Elon Musk. I will present on the first part of the success story for Elon Musk, and Brian Lim will continue with the second part. Elon Musk is a South African-born American entrepreneur and businessman who was born on June 28, 1971, in Pretoria, South Africa. He taught himself how to program and write codes, and when he was 12, he saw his first software which was a game he created called Blaster. At age 17, which is in 1989, Elon moved to Canada to attend Queen's University and avoid mandatory service in the South African military. In 1992, Mas left Canada to study business and physics at the University of Pennsylvania with a scholarship and graduated with an undergraduate degree in economics and stayed for a second bachelor's degree in physics. In 1995, when Elon Musk was 23 years old, with $28,000 and his younger brother Campbell at his side, Elon Musk started Jeep too. In the end, the Musk brother accepted Compax 305 million condition to sell Zip2, which also gave him the capital to enter a more potential field, which is the online payment platform. This earned him 22 million for his 7% share for the company when he was only 27 years old and made him a million A. He then used money to create an online financial payment company X.com, which was then merged with a company called Confinity, and the resulting company came to be known as PayPal. Elon was then ousted from the company due to many disagreements over branding and micromanaging, and got replaced by Peter Thiel before it was bought by eBay for $1.5 billion. Elon was determined to generate funding for an electric car startup called Tesla and other companies like SpaceX, SolarCity and the Boring Company, which also called TDC. And now, I'll be continuing the success story of Elon Musk. From 2004 to 2007, Elon joined engineers Martin Eberhardt and Mark Tempening to help run Tesla Motors, where Musk was integral in designing the first electric car, which was the Tesla Roadster, after Eberhard was ousted. From the firm in 2007, following a series of disagreements, Elon seized management control as CEO and product architect. In addition to producing electric cars, Tesla maintains a robust presence in the solar energy space thanks to its acquisition of SolarCity for $2.6 billion. In 2008, Tesla Motors released its first car, the completely electric Tesla Roadster. In company tests, it achieved 245 miles, which is 394 kilometers, on a single charge, a range unprecedented for a production electric car. In later years, Elon will release new cars, such as the Tesla Model S, X, 3, and Y, and a future Cybertruck with a new Tesla Roadster. With his works with PayPal, Tesla Motors, SolarCity, the Boron Company, and SpaceX has defined criticism made advance in all these frontiers. In July 2016, Neuralink Corporation was founded by Elon Musk and others, which is a neural technology company which develops implantable brain-machine interfaces. Neuralink wants to be a computer inside everyone's brain one that we do not have to carry around in our hands, and that's undetectable in use. In December 2016, Elon founded his latest company, called The Boring Company, also known as TBC, which is an American infrastructure and tunnel construction service company. In 2010, Tesla has now become one of the most valued car companies in the world, and its value has skyrocketed since its creation, as it has revolutionized what a fully electric car 
can be with a net worth of $700 billion in 2010. And finally, in 2021, Tesla founder and CEO Elon Musk is the richest person on the planet, much ahead of Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos, who came in second with a worth of $189 billion. CEO Elon Musk could become the world's first trillionaire by 2015, according to a report by the Economic Times. He has a very famous quote that he goes by, which is, if you go back a few hundred years, what we take for granted today would seem like magic. Being able to talk to people over long distances to transmit images, flying, accessing vast amounts of data like an oracle. These are all the things that we have considered magic a few hundred years ago. Hello, my name is Ivy Estatio and I'm going to present about Ellen's leadership style. So, Ellen has both transformational and transactional leadership style. He has both a good and bad perspective as a leader itself. He is a good planner. Uh, he has a very strong visionary leadership and innovative also the insane work ethic. Elon Musk is a leader that sets his sights through constant improvement and there will always be a better way in doing everything for him. He is also popular with the new invention which involve out of the box thinking made him a leader that approach uh, transformational leadership style and his action towards employees make him a part of a leader that approach transactional leadership style as well. He is also innovative. Why do I say so? Because he once said that uh, other advice that he would give is to not blindly follow trends. Question and challenge the status quo. Make sure you understand the fundamental principles of what you are trying to do before you get into the details. Otherwise, you could be building on faulty ground. And he is also a leader who highly inspiring. He inspires his people, employees to be exact, or others in every meaning of ideas that he has. Most of the former workers who ever work alongside him exhibit that it is rigorous and demanding. But in one point, it is a formative experience in their careers. They also state that he is aggressive. Why? Because his attitude uh, towards success innovation, which can be seen through his innovative products that he and his respective team have launched. Besides that, he is also a leader that is ambitious. Setting ambition that is highly risky makes him a leader that is ambitious even if it is impossible for his employees or team to achieve. However, uh, with a transactional leadership style, Ellen managed to make Tesla one of the best and most innovative company in the world in recent times. Nevertheless, in other transactional dimension, Ellen is the type of leader who shows contingent reward. Contingent rewards help leaders to stimulate the performance of followers. And he also described fully what he is going to do to his respective team for his short-term goals, to be at the peak of achievement for his business. This indicates that he is a good communicator, whereas Musk communicates effectively and transparently with his teams and employees to achieve exclusive results through workers' hard work itself. That's all from me. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll move on to challenges faced by Elon Musk. So we can see that despite being a billionaire, was inspired millions of people throughout the world. It goes without saying that there are many hardships that successful people go through, often 
unnoticed by the public due to the sheer brilliance of their work and achievements throughout their career. You can see in early stages in his life, it may not be much of a challenge, but he struggled a lot with getting through with people. He had trouble explaining his daydreams to his parents to the point that it arose concern until it reached that he had to take hearing tests. And after dropping out of university later on after a few years, he had a very hard time getting into a career that would relate to internet as he thought it would become important in the future. And moving on to his business Zip2, in the early stages of Zip2, him and his brother had a struggle in its initial startup because of uh, uh, money that uh, most of it came from his father contributing financially which uh, they were in the financial bind. And we can see that their operations were very limited with only a single computer and a single dial-up modem where they were forced to live in the office just to save budget and increase the revenue of the business. And in during those times, Ellen had trouble communicating and dealing with procedures with staff due to his introvertedness as well as lack of proper education in coding. So now we move on to PayPal. You can see that after he sold Zip2, he started PayPal, which then go according uh, as plan, where his first product for PayPal has been branded one of the worst products. And not only that, in that same year, he crashed his million dollar car, McLaren F1. Moving on. We move to SpaceX. Uh, we can see that another challenge occurred where he tried to buy intercontinent, uh, intercontinental missiles from Russia. But Russia declined the sales of rockets to them. And that is where he started SpaceX. But throughout the journey, we can see that there have been many um, challenges where there are many failed launches, which followed up by explosions in the year of 2006 till 2008, and during 2008, SpaceX was on the brink of bankruptcy. We can see that the company managed to sustain, sustain itself uh, barely, and a few more failures we can see occurred as well in the years of 2013, 2015, and 2016, where more rockets failed to launch and exploded. And moving on to Tesla, we can see that shortly after founding SpaceX, he moved on to Tesla. And we can see that there's not much challenges, although we can see that the debt load is rather concerning, where we can see in the same year of 2008, we can see that Tesla was also on the brink of bankruptcy. And, this, and despite that, Tesla managed to sustain itself, but of course, with the cost of Elon trying to bankrupt himself, much like uh, SpaceX, where operations continued um, until the year of 2014, where we also saw more challenges, such as um, several reports on Tesla's S model, where it experienced spontaneous battery explosions. Hey everyone, my name is Elena with metrics number BG2011032. I will continue the presentation on If I Was Elon Musk. If I was Elon Musk, I would focus more on the company's objectives and goals. He is too distracted with different ideas and strategies such as global manufacturing, engineering, and more. While it may have worked for him, changing techniques so quickly is not always a good idea without communicating with his teams. So, as a leader, we should focus more on our main mission and vision and not constantly change on our cause that will actually affect our organization especially our employees that work for us next he has been chastised for being a person who is compiled to work excessively hard and for long periods of time and an overbearing micromanager in this case Elon Musk employees will feel as if their leader does not trust them and it also causes them to be concerned about the 
constant interruptions will suffocate their productivity. Thus, employees are disempowered by their leader's lack of trust, which can negatively impact productivity and team spirit. Therefore, if I was Elon Musk, I will need to strike a delicate balance between monitoring my employees' performance and giving them some autonomy. Thus, leaders should focus the effort on empowering their employees to be better so that leaders and their employees can all contribute to the company's success. Perhaps, this is what Elon Musk's approach is missing. That is all from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ellen Lau Chia Xiang from HE19BG201102. In here, I gonna talk about if I was Elon Musk, how I will do things differently. First of all, if I was Elon Musk, I will focus more on the product qualities compared to the quantity of the product. This is because the quality of the product itself is very important to the customer compared to the quantity of the product in the market. For example, the quality of Tesla Model Y has a very big problem due to uneven panel gap, miscreen trim gap, and the pen defect of the car. This is a serious problem for a new car company to have such issue with the car qualities. Therefore, if I was Elon Musk, I will focus more on the qualities of the product compared to the quantity of the product because I believe the quality of the product can help boost the quantity of the product indirectly. Besides that, if I was Elon Musk, I would improve my public speaking skills and spend some time meeting with employees or high-level managers. This is because Elon Musk is also well known that he does not like meeting with his employee and also public speaking. This is also the greatest weaknesses of Elon Musk is his medical public speaking skills. This is because during the public speaking, we can see that Elon Musk shattered during his presentation. Therefore, if I was him, I would improve my public speaking skill and spend some time with employees to get some information about the companies and the problem they face so we can solve it together then can improve the production of the company at the same time to keep the qualities of the product on point that's all from me thank you moving on to further elaborate point five we can see that Elon Musk has an extreme micromanagement behavior which can be associated with his desire to achieve production goals with aggressive means. So this causes him to overweight the needs for his idea to become reality more than the welfare of his worker. So if I was Elon Musk, um, eh, rather than having that extreme micromanagement behavior, I would go through therapy and consul uh, counseling to work on this particular behavior and focus more on the work environment to ensure my workers are uh, safe and well. And in point six, you can see that um, Elon Musk has an egoistic behavior. We can see that he tries to put uh, his foot in other people's businesses. He doesn't take criticism lightly and his latest acts of egoistic and childish behavior can be seen in the current pandemic, which he downplayed it being dumb. This got even worse when he was tested positive for COVID in November last year, where he says he doesn't trust the test results and that there's something extremely bogus going on. And nevertheless, um, if I were to be Ellen, I would try to be more open to criticism as well as suggestions, especially from people who are expert on the specific field. Um, because that uh, there will be times where we are wrong and there will also be times where um, if we refuse to accept it, we will be unable to be more innovative and move forward and will also jeopardize entire operations inside the organization and also ruin its very own repetition. And that is all for 
um, this presentation. Thank you very much.